Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Greater St. James AME Church School Moment. Thank you so much for joining us today. Before we begin, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another day's journey. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to study your word. Lord, help us to draw nigh unto you, so you will draw nigh unto us. And Lord, please be glorified as we study your word today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now, we're in another quarter, and so our lesson for this quarter is going to focus on Moses, the prophet of deliverance. So our lesson is entitled, Moses, prophet of deliverance. Our lesson scripture is coming from Exodus, the 12th chapter, verses 8 through 50, and Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 through 22. The focus scripture is coming from Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 18 verses 15 through 22. The key verse, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. Deuteronomy 18 and 15. And now the focus scripture. The Lord your God will raise up you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, if I hear the voice of the Lord my God anymore or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything I command. Anyone who does not heed my words, heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, the prophet shall die. You shall say to yourself, how can we recognize a word that the Lord has not spoken? If a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, but the things does not take place or prove true, it is a word that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Do not be frightened by it. The word of God. And now the introduction. But let me just share quickly. When you think about Moses, you think about Moses. God is going to raise up Moses to be a mighty leader among his people. Our lesson is talking about a prophet of deliverance. God will never leave his people without a leader. So that's very important one for us to note. The other part too is that have you ever thought about why was Moses given the name Moses? Well, Pharaoh's daughter actually rescued Moses from the Nile. So Moses' name comes from the Hebrew verb meaning to pull out, to draw out. So remember now, Pharaoh's daughter found Moses in the Nile River pulled Moses out of a basket that his mother placed him in. And so he was saved by Pharaoh's daughter and raised up in Pharaoh's household. And God taught him how to be a leader and a deliverer. And now the introduction. Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the Jewish Torah and of our Christian Bible. The events recorded in Deuteronomy took place while Moses and the Israelites were still in the land of Moab. The words proclaimed by Moses are presented 40 days prior to their entering the promised land, a symbolic juncture and critical reminder for God's people. At the ripe age of 120 years old, Moses is experiencing his final days of life. He recognizes 
this as a crucial time of his leadership and his role as God's prophet to reinforce the mandated laws that are so crucial to God's faithful covenant. Realizing his own impending death, he used his own opportunity this opportunity to announce a call to obedience. The definition of Deuteronomy is interpreted as a second law. Moses' retelling of God's laws is the dominant theological theme in this book, declaring that all must abide by the code written in Deuteronomy, which honors God's covenant with God's people. Verses 9 through 14 identify its examples of the distinct differences in religious beliefs and practices that Israel must never engage. The call for holiness and obedience is reiterated throughout this book with warnings of the tragic consequences if the people fall to heed God's commands. Moses does not leave the people wondering about their future leadership. He prophetically states that God will provide a prophet who will continue to lead and guide them in their journeys ahead. Moses, prophet of deliverance. Now, as we move into the uh, telling the Bible story, we're going to learn a lot of um, different attributes about Moses. Let us begin. Moses is considered one of the greatest prophets that led the Israelites. Yet even Moses had no transition. Moses had to transition his power and leadership to the next generation. Deuteronomy provides the narrative of this great prophet's encouraging word to the people to trust God to provide a new prophetic leader with the same anointing and gifting as Moses himself. Moses speaks these words not from his own volition, but through the Spirit of God speaking through him. Moses was not a stranger to hearing God's voice. His ministry calling began with God commissioning him on a holy mountain. Illustrating God's divine presence through a non-consuming brush fire, that burning bush. This would be a meager example of God's power as compared to changing the human condition of leprosy or bringing life to an innate object. Moses frequently had encounters with Yahweh, our God, throughout Egypt and during the long, arduous journey through the wilderness. The journey ultimately leads Moses to his final chapter of life. His new mission is to reiterate God's covenant commands to the people and leave them reassured that they would be led by a worthy successor. Moses was not only a prophet, but a social activist against the oppressive tyranny of Pharaoh. He was the mediator between a race rebellious community and God. His leadership required him to be an enforcer of law and always a committed prophet for God. These characteristics are the standard for the future prophets following Moses. God's words are to be placed in the prophet's mouth and only those words should the prophet speak. The prophet's message from God is delivered to protect, to guide the people. However, those who reject the true prophet's message will face a harsh penalty. The prophet cannot be careless and reckless in using the sacred office. There were severe, there are severe consequences for the actions of prophets who speaks presumptuously. There are severe consequences for the actions of the prophets who speaks presumptuously. 
Therefore, the people must be on guard for those who declare their authority to be a true prophet, but merely offer opinionated insights for their own personal agendas. Moses' message is a time, timeless one. The call to the prophetic ministry continues throughout the Old Testament and New Testament with frequent warnings to guard against false prophets and following their direction. And as we move through our lesson today, we will see how God is using Moses' transition to send a clear message to his people. God had a successor in place, but Moses also had a departing message. God will always send a leader who will speak. And as children of God, it is our responsibility to follow the commands of God that are spoken through his chosen. And now we're moving forward in our lesson to the Sankofa. And so we're going to read about a great woman today. Her name is Harriet Tubman. She was a powerful force in our history. So let us begin. Harriet Tubman grew up during the Second Great Awakening, a time when Christians believed that they needed to reform America in order to usher in Christ's second coming. During this time, a number of black female preachers preached the message of revival and sanctification on Maryland's Eastern Shore. One of these preachers was Jarena Lee, the first authorized female preacher in the AME church. Historical records are uncertain as to whether Tubman attended any of Lee's camp meetings. However, she was inspired by the evangelist. She came to understand that women could hold religious authority. She also believed that there was no separation between the physical and spiritual world, a direct result of African religious practices. Tubman literally believes that she moved between a physical existence and a spiritual experience where she sometimes flew over the land. An enslaved person who trusted Tubman to help him escape simply noted that, sup that Tubman had the charm or God's protection. Charms or amulets were strongly associated with religious beliefs. Tubman near-death injury became her spiritual gift. When she was a teenager, Tubman happened to be at the, a dry goods Door when an overseer was trying to capture an enslaved person who had left the, his slave labor camp without permission. The angry man threw a two pound weight at the runaway but hit Tubman instead, crushing part of her skull. For two days, she lingered between life and death. The injury left her with temporal lobe epilepsy, resulting in severe headaches, narcolepsy, and causing her to have dream-like trances. Tubman believed that her trances and visions were God's revelation and evidence of his direct involvement in her life. She believed in God's providential guidance and protection, making her fearless and relentless as an abolitionist. Once while leading two men to freedom, she believed she heard God speak to her and say, stop, leave the road. She proceeded to lead the reluctant men through an icy stream and ultimately to their freedom. Harriet Tubman was a woman who was small in stature, but she was truly a giant in her faith and her calling. What an awesome example of courageous leadership that made an impact in our world. And as we study and support um, Women's History Month, it's very important for us to look at the women who've made an impact profound impact in our life as Moses did. But let me share with you, you do not have to look far because there are great women all around us. Think about those women who taught you how to pray, who taught you how to live, who showed you the ways of God. Think about those women 
who did not spare the rod. Think about those women who actually delivered us from so many things. We thank God for the examples that we have. And now we're moving to our life application. Because so many times we come to Sunday school, we hear the lesson, but how do we apply it to our life? This is going to help us. Let us begin. The book of Deuteronomy is a retelling of the law, charging the Israelites to review the commands that God had already given. They were reassured that their responsibility was not only to follow God's command, but also to follow the new leadership that would proclaim God's message. The key reminder in this lesson is that all types of leaders must be tested for authenticity, integrity, and love for God. Whether the person is called to be a prophet of God word or a leader in secular vocation, the person's credibility can still be questions, questioned. The responsibility for truth still applies in every vocation, but particularly for those who lead God's people. Now, one of the things you will notice, people are looking for a leader. That is one of the things you can, you can experience in all of our journeys throughout the scriptures, you will see God is would raise up leader after leader after leader. You can go on through the Old Testament, you will see that he started with Moses, Joshua, then he went into the judges, then he went into the prophets, then there was one, John the Baptist, saying, prepare the way of the Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, came to lead us. A prophet of deliverance also came before Christ, and his name was Moses, to show the way of the Lord. Now, we have to make a determination if we are going to follow the leader. And so now, we're going to begin with our questions. How do you distinguish between an authentic leader who truly seeks to serve God and provide for God's people from leaders who lack integrity and are guided by selfish ambition? How do you distinguish between an authentic leader who truly seeks to serve God and provide for God's people from leaders who lack integrity and are guided by selfish ambition. And I will give you a moment. How do you distinguish? How can you distinguish? I'm so glad you asked. The Bible says that a tree is known by the fruit it bears. So when you look at a leader's life, you look at a leader the walk, talk, decorum, example, you begin to look and you can look at a leader. What is that leader saying? And then look deeper. What is that leader doing? A tree is known by the fruit it bears. A leader is known by the fruit they bear. Question number two, what evidence of prophetic gifting can be found in the church today. Whenever you look at the pulpit and you look at the messenger who stands in the space to speak God's word, what evidence of prophetic gifting can we can be found? We can always look to the pulpit for a message that will direct our lives. But the Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Let me go deeper. There are so many people who say they've got so much to do, they couldn't come to church. Okay, here's COVID. And now, what is the excuse? Church can be right here, right where you are. But do you stop your world long enough 
to listen so we can receive the word of life so we can live a better life so that we can be delivered so we can be saved that is what is so important that we have to look and live we have to look to the word of god so that we can live and the pastors the ministers the ones who are called by god are constantly pouring out but are we opening our hearts to receive? The choice is ours. And so we can find evidence of this by looking in the pulpit every chance we can to receive a word of hope. Question number three. What action should Christians take to confront prophets and other leaders who falsely proclaim God's will and mislead the Pope? The public what actions i will share that it is very important to pray pray for leaders pray for those the bible says who have rule and the bible says that men ought to always pray and not faint and the bible also says the king the the um, king's heart is in the lord's hands so if there is someone who may not be going the right way the challenge is did you pray did you ask god to send them because every time you ask God to send someone to help them be redirected. Because one of the things that we think, um, one thing that we think a lot of times is that leaders are perfect, when in actuality, no one's perfect. So therefore, it is very important for us to pray when we, um, when it talks about confronting prophets. I believe our most powerful um, confrontation can be on our knees. And um, so God can change hearts and then God can sh change behaviors of his leaders if necessary. So we certainly hope that um, you all will pay attention to that because Moses did not have the perfect life. Go back and read his story. Moses did some things, but God still used him because God had a plan and a purpose for his life and God kept his hands on Moses' life and kept him in his way so he became a mighty prophet of deliverance. So we thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our lesson. We're now going to have the closing prayer. We're going to just read this. Close with prayer for leaders of any capacity, including pastors, lay leaders, politicians, teachers, coaches, medical professionals, judges, etc. In the prayer with, may they hear the Lord, the Lord's voice, and lead us like Moses with faith, with power, and with a pure and sincere heart. May our leaders lead like Moses with a pure and sincere heart. Let me share this. When we talk down about leaders and we tear them down, that does not help them. What makes them stronger is encouraging and pushing them forward because it's, it's, a, it's a heavy load to lead. But what are you doing to help the leader thrive and become their best? It's very important that we find time to pray for our leaders so that they can remain steadfast and unmovable in this season. We certainly hope you enjoyed our lesson today and we hope you will join us for our morning worship service. And we hope that you will enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for joining us.